Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. And I want to take a couple minutes today and dovetail off of what I was talking about on Monday. We spent some time talking about hope and the reality of hope, the power of hope as we move forward. You know, it's it's dangerous and deadly for us to stay still and stagnant. Uh, that's true even physically uh, during this time of quarantine, which is why I know at least on my street, there are more uh, walkers, runners, and dog walkers, and bike riders than I've ever seen in the last number of years living uh, th uh, on the, the street where you know, all of these people are, are going by over and over and over again, which is good. They're out getting some sort of movement to replace the normal movement that we typically have of going to the grocery store, going to a restaurant, you know, whatever it might be that we are now quarantined a bit, stuck at home more than we would like to be because our bodies are designed for movement. We need that. We don't want to you know, stiffen up and stagnate even physically, but spiritually, that's also a reality. Uh, we aren't called to stay still and stagnate in our faith. We don't cross the line uh, into faith and then stay there one step in. We're called uh, over and over and over again in the Bible to move forward to go on to maturity, to grow into our faith, to, to supplement our faith with all these other things. You know, Second Peter 1, that if we possess these qualities and they're increasing, then we'll be effective and productive in our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, that's hope. We're posturing forward. We're moving forward into what the Lord has for us in the days to come. And I want to talk for a couple of minutes uh, again today about hope. And because it is, you know, hope is the light in the darkness. Hope is what pushes us through uh, the troubling times because we know better times are ahead. And while it may not feel that way right now, we, we stand on the truth that it is real. It is true. God is moving. God is working. We have to believe those things. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to give up and sit down and never move again. Uh, but we trust that the Lord is up to something, uh, even when it doesn't seem like it. And that's certainly been true for the last seven weeks, uh, as this pandemic has uh, not only swept around the world, but dramatically affected even our own homes and our own lives uh, here in our little world. And we need to, uh, to see that during this time, the Lord is up to something. We don't always know what that might be, but the Lord is at work. Uh, he's got plans, and, and, and we trust in those things because for the believer in Christ, better days are always ahead. No matter what's happening now, better days are always ahead. So we posture forward. We move towards those better days. And I'm going to take a couple minutes and go to Lamentations. Uh, Lamentations is an incredible book. And we've talked about it before. I talked about it you know, within the last couple of weeks, even on uh, these devotions that we're doing. But I've mentioned it a couple times uh, during sermons as well. Uh, Lamentations is one of the most interesting books in the Bible. It's written by the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet, uh, which I, I'm not sure he would appreciate that that was his legacy, that he was known to weep all the time. But considering his circumstance... We understand why that is. Uh, this is a prophet to God's people who's watching uh, God bring devastation on the nation. God had warned them for centuries uh, that if you continue to be unfaithful, if you continue to worship idols, if you continue to turn your back on me, I will bring in uh, this power from outside, another nation, and they're going to defeat you. And they're going to carry you off into exile, and it's going to be bad for you. It's going to be ugly for you. I don't want to have to do that, so you need to repent. He gave them multiple opportunities to do so. Well, they didn't. Uh, and, and Jeremiah is one of these prophets. It, the last prophet, before the devastation hits, to say, this is what God says he's going to do. God is always true to his word. He's always good on his promises. Most of the time, that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. When God promises destruction and devastation because of unfaithfulness, he means it. Uh, he's going to deliver on his promises, whether you like it or not, and he's going to do so on his time frame. And that's what Jeremiah over and over and over again was trying to tell them. 
and so many prophets before him, but the people did not listen. They continued in their sin. They continued in their sexual immorality and their idolatry, and they have turned away from the Lord in so many ways, and finally God brings the justice. Uh, he always does that. God brings the justice and the devastation, and this other nation comes in and obliterates the nation of Israel, and some are carted off into exile, but but the city of Jerusalem is destroyed. Um, I mean, it is absolutely blown up. The temple is destroyed. Uh, all of, the, uh, of these things that, that God's people had become defined by are now gone. Uh, I mean, this is God's city. It was to be his beacon of light on the earth, and now it is in ruin, uh, completely and utterly so. Well, Jeremiah writes Lamentations as a series of laments over the destruction of the, seri- the, the, the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Uh, it, it's, it's like a series of funeral dirges, as, as if for the, the funeral of a dear friend. It's like the national funeral service over Israel and the city of Jerusalem, and it's pretty dark. Uh, and he's, he's writing these poetic things, it's pretty dark. Uh, but even with that, there's some beautiful poetry uh, that's happening in here. Uh, so, and again, I've mentioned this before, but it, it's, it's so uh, incredible to me that the, the Bible does little things like this. So, uh, Lamentations is written in ancient Hebrew. And in ancient Hebrew, there are 22 letters in the alphabet. And uh, chapters 1, 2, 4, and 5 of Lamentations each have 22 verses. Uh, the first verse begins with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second verse begins with the second letter and all the way down through verse 22. Well, chapter 3, right in the middle, has 66 verses. The first three verses begin with the first Hebrew uh, letter of the alphabet, uh, Aleph, and uh, the second three begin with the second one and on and on all the way down through all 22. It's just absolutely incredible. Little things like that that we don't see in our English translations, but in the original are absolutely beautiful poetry. And tucked right in the middle in chapter 3 as the centerpiece is hope. Surrounding all of this is devastation and death. But right in the middle, after laying out all of this um, sadness and and, uh, devastation of what's happening, here's what Jeremiah writes, verse 21. But this I call to mind. And therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. What an incredible truth. Again, light in the middle of the darkness. Life in the middle of the death. Everything around him seems off, bad, deadly, but this I call to mind. So he's basing his life, he's basing his faith, not on what he sees, not on how he feels. Friends, that's dangerous. We don't base our faith, we can't base our life on what we see around us right now. We can't base it on how we feel right now. Instead, we we call these things to mind. Here's what I know to be true. Here's what I need to remind myself of. And because I call this to mind, therefore I have hope. This creates hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God never stops loving his people. Uh, He loves you. Uh, You are his. If you've placed your trust in the Lord Jesus, you're his. He he loves you, and that never ceases. Nothing will change that. Nothing can stop that. Uh, The end of Romans chapter 8 says nothing can separate us from that love. His mercies never come to an end. Uh, There's there's justice uh, that is getting what you deserve. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Uh, That's why in a court of law we say I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court, that I'm guilty, I deserve this punishment, it's right and good that I get it, But out of mercy, I don't get what I deserve. God's mercies never come to an end. Friends, by our sin, by our rebellion against God, we deserve death and hell for all eternity. 
We deserve nothing good from his hand, but we don't get that. If you've placed your trust in the Lord Jesus, his mercies never come to an end. We're always not getting what we deserve. And what a beautiful truth that is. They're new every morning, not because yesterday's are uh, wasted and we used up you know, the, all of the resources that God has for us, but every single day we're reminded yet again, you, you will never run out of God's mercy. Great is your faithfulness. No matter what's happening, no matter how we feel about what's happening, God is always faithful. He always delivers. He never doesn't deliver. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. The Lord is what I'm after. The Lord is, is what is filling my soul. He is my inheritance. He is everything to me. Therefore, I will hope in him. And, and that's what it means you know, when, when hope is used as a verb, uh, it, right, as it is there at the end of verse 24, I will hope in him. Uh, to hope means to center your expectations on. Uh, so the Lord is my portion. He is everything. Therefore, I center all my expectations on him. I don't have expectations. Uh, I don't center my expectations on my job. And some people have, have seen in this season why that's dangerous. I don't center my expectations on the, the amount of money in my bank account. I certainly don't uh, center expectations on how much I have in re my retirement account uh, because a lot of us are worth a lot less now than we were uh, a couple of months ago. We don't center our expectations on government leaders uh, to you know, decide what's best for us. The Lord is my portion. I center my expectations completely and totally on him. I hope in him. So if you want to have hope in the midst of the darkness, as Jeremiah did again, he's surrounded on all sides by death and devastation and darkness. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. I remind myself God's love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. His faithfulness is great. He is my portion, therefore I hope in him. So every single day, no matter what's happening, no matter what we see, no matter how we feel, we remind ourselves that this is true. And because this is true, therefore, I have hope. What a gift that is. What a precious truth that is. So friends, no matter what you see, no matter how you feel, your life isn't based on those things today. Uh, those are not your portion today. Your bank account, your job, your government, all of that, they're not your portion. The Lord is. Uh, we, we center our expectations on him and on him alone because the Bible says those who hope in him will never be ashamed. We won't be embarrassed that we did that. We won't be let down that we did that. We'll never be disappointed by placing our center, uh, centering our expectations on the Lord himself. So in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of challenge, this is what we do. We call this to mind. We remind ourselves of these truths, and therefore we hope in him. We center our expectations on him. So I hope that's been a blessing to you. I hope that's been an encouragement to you. Again, we love you. We miss you. Hope to see you again very, very soon. And we'll see you next week for some more daily devotions. God bless.